legendary Manchester Arena, the AO Arena, and it's something fans have been waiting for for years. It's a main event that will thrill you, excite you, and it will bring the thrill of victory along with the agony of defeat. And it's all brought to you live on Sky Sports Box Office by Boxer Promotions and our promoter, Mr. Ben Shalom, and our sponsorship provided by Bet365, Arnold Clark, ICICB, Village Hotels, Everlast, and Wow Hydrate. Let's bring the stars of the show to the stage at this time. Coming out first from Sheffield, he's the former welterweight world champion, Kel Special K! opponent to the microphones, ladies and gentlemen, from Bolton, the former light welterweight world champion, Amir King Khan! I don't know about you, but I have to tell you, you know, when you say the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, that's something that many writers here, the broadcasters, the promoters, and the fans will experience together. The fighters, each one will have the, th or one will have the thrill of victory. One will have the agony of defeat. But as a fan, we're going to experience both because through the years, we've both come to know these guys, we love them, we appreciate them. For me, I've introduced them in the ring and I've known them for many years. And it's just, while it's an exciting experience, it's gonna be a tough night for a lot of us because this is something we've looked forward to for so long. So uh, let me just get things started and pass this on to my longtime friend of over 25 years from Sky Sports, the head of Sky Sports Boxing, Mr. Adam Smith. Thank you very much. A pleasure to have the legend here back in the UK, Michael Buffer. Fantastic to just give you the big fight feel, doesn't it? Uh, it's been an incredibly exciting, enticing week here in the fabulous fighting city of Manchester. And the former headliners, Hatton, Hay, Froch, even Nassim Hamad, who's just called Ben's phone about five minutes ago, cannot wait for this. We've seen colossal, fiery grudge matches over the years. None may be more heated in recent times than Frotch and Groves, of course. And as Ben and I drove past Old Trafford last night, the Ben and Eubank memories flooded back. October 1993, Ben was just born a week before that. He was uh, one week old when that happened. Incredible. And now, after years of waiting for the most bitter rivalry of this modern era, we reach a conclusion in less than 60 hours on Saturday night. So to Ben Shalom, the CEO of Boxer, you made the fight happen, and it's your first Sky Sports box office event. Yeah, wow, Sky Sports box office. Um, something anyone from my generation has grown up with. Uh, it's the biggest brand in boxing. It's, bought, it's grown the sport more than ever. It's the history of the 20 years, and it's been some great promoters that have carried that mantle from Frank Maloney to Frank Warren to then Eddie Hearn. It's special to be able to take this brand into 2022 now, into a new era where there's going to be 24-7 access, where there's going to be content, where there's going to be the greatest storytelling in British boxing. But we want to stay, save it for special nights, and uh, this is a special night. Calm B. Brook, it almost feels strange saying it. It's a fight I've dreamt of watching, never mind promoting. It's a fight that has captured the imagination of the British sport for a long time. We started our company four years ago, about 200 yards from the Manchester Arena. This was a fight we talked about in the office long into the night. And when we got the chance over the past six months to actually try and make this happen, it's been relentless. It's been hard work. The teams have been hard work. And now we're here. It's unbelievable. We're three nights away. I mean, this was a fight 
that we always wanted to see. It has the narrative, it has the storytelling. You couldn't really make it up. The entertainment in this fight, two superstars, at the end of the day, it's a lad from Sheffield and a lad from Bolton that went on to achieve things that we could only dream of. It was almost too much for them to fight each other. There was almost too much to lose. They both went and conquered the world. But now we get to see it on Saturday night. It's going to be absolutely packed in the Manchester Arena on Saturday. I want to thank the fighters for, for wanting to take this opportunity and put it all on the line. It's, it's something for the fans that we've been waiting for for a long, long time. And lastly, I want to thank Sky Sports because they, I'm starting to see the scale of this thing. And I think without Sky Sports in British boxing, it would be a very, very, very sorry place. And um, they've been unwavering in the support over the past six months to build the stable and build boxing back up and culminating in a night that means as much to us at Boxer and to my, myself personally as it does to them. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for the teams. The fighters look in tremendous shape and uh, everything is set up perfectly for Saturday night. Thanks, Ben. This is very personal for many of us at Sky. We followed the careers of both Amir and Kel for many, many years. And did we ever think this was actually going to happen? Well, it is on Saturday night. Let's get straight to the fighters, the gladiators that are putting it all on the line. It's all about this fight for legacy. Amir, first to you. As Ben said, the pair of you look in phenomenal shape. We saw little bits in the workouts yesterday in the Pac Trafford Centre. How excited in your whole career are you for this night on Saturday? Um, I'm very excited. You know, um, this is a massive fight for me. Um, my 40th fight. Um, been as a professional boxer for a very, very long time and has to be one of the biggest fights of my career. Um, winning world titles is one thing. Going to America was my dream to fight over there. <clears throat> and I did that. And, but this fight means a lot to me, my career. And that's one of the reasons I had to go back to a drawing board, change my whole training camp. And that's when I joined Team Bomac and Team Crawford. Um, I went all the way to Omaha, Nebraska. And um, I just needed that motivation to, and that push. And I thought the only people who could do that for me is this team. And um, went back to the drawing board. Um, and I think, you know, knowing that this is going to be one of the biggest fights in Britain gives you that extra push as well, that motivation. And being on Sky Sports, where everyone gets the opportunity to watch the fight, is going to be massive and amazing. I mean, you know, I'm just worried about one few things. I'm worried about Kel's health after the beating I'm going to be giving him come uh, this fight night. I mean, look. I think the beating he's going to get is something that he's never had before. And uh, all the talking he's been doing as well. Um, you know, we are going to, we are going to definitely um, put him in his place because it's been a very long time. I mean, like 10 years it's been going on for. So this is my time now to put him in, in his place. And, you know, one thing I want to say as well, another thing, I, I think Kel's always been very obsessed with my career. You know, he's been like a fanboy, which is honest truth. And, you know, I've been living in his head for such a long time that I think it's going to come stage where he's going to say, I mean, he needs to stop paying me some rent. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I mean but it's been, that, it's, been, it's been like that. But, you know, we just need, need to go in there. Like I said, put all the words to a side. I think we've done enough talking. I just can't wait to get in the ring and, you know, put a, do a job on him. Now. But, because I mean, what's fueled the fire, I, I think, for you? You know what? I think it's more jealousy than anything. I mean, look, I've been on my own... In my own, do my own, having my own career, I've been fighting, I've been traveling to America. My dream was always to, you know, win a world title and also then fight in uh, the likes of MSG, Manchester Square Garden, fight at the MGM Arena, fight in Vegas, have your face lit up on the Vegas Strip. Obviously, Kel was over here. That's the reason the fight didn't happen them days because I was already campaigning in America. I think now, as it's got to this stage where we thought, you know what, it makes sense. Having it. A lot of people might be saying it's too late, but now I think it's been massive. I mean, the, the outcome of this has been huge. And, um, you know, um, I, I think it's going to be, I think it's the right time the fight's happening. You know? And what happens if you lose? Would you ever live with yeah. that? I mean, look, both of us, I mean, we both, this is a, it's, it's a big thing for us both. I mean, if either, either of us lose, it's going to be something we're not going to be living with, we can't live with for a very long time. I mean, it's going to haunt us, haunt, us, haunt us for a very long time as well. So I think, look, I'm going to put that in my mind. That's the reason I trained so hard and I've not left no stone unturned. I've done everything I've needed to because I know that, you know, um, I can't lose this fight. Cal, let's bring you in. 
He says it's jealousy. He says the fanboy, you've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this fight. There's an obsession. There's something in you that has got to get rid of Amir Khan. And it's been burning for so, so long, hasn't it? Yeah, hey, listen. You know, he, he's known, it goes back from the amateur days. You know, he were always, he boxed at 60 kilograms, I was 63.5. We used to win, he used to win championship at the weight below, I used to win it, the one above. You know, we, uh, then we, we went to England team, we're actually, we, we shared, you know, the same, same room. You know, I know, I know exactly what word, you know, and then obviously he did what he did in the Olympics, got a, a good uh, sign-on fee, and, um, and we, we, we was with the same promoter, Frank Warren. We always got promised uh, that we would fight down the line. But like he said, he, he said in many interviews, like, oh, he's Kel, but I don't even, he, didn't even say, he said that he didn't even know who I was. You know, there's things like this, and, you know, he's, he's, not just give, he's never given me that respect, you know, and he, he knows... When you shared a room together. We've shared a room together, you know, with... with We've shared a room, we do an article in, in the boxing, boxing news when we're 18 year old, you know, like obviously we were going to be built and... That's what I'm saying, right? Don't laugh. Listen, I ain't sharing a room with you. Trust me, I ain't sharing no room with you. I ain't sharing a room with you. Don't be saying that. That's what I'm saying, right, Kel? Especially with the stuff I've heard. What have you heard? Is that, I'm not going to go into that. Listen, we'll be fighting on Saturday, so don't be saying... Sharing a, you know what you should have said instead? You should have said... Share a ring with him or something, but share the room with him. Are you sure what's on gay sites wanking yourself off? Oh, yeah, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> Cal. Cal, come on. Anyway, come on. Sorry. so listen, the, to the, talk is, the talk is nearly over. Listen, the, the fight's here now. You know, I don't like him, you don't like me. You're going to see an epic fight Saturday night. What do you take with the fact that he says he's going to give you a beating, a beating that you'll, you, almost that you won't recover from? And of course, for the loser, it is a very, very lonely place to be Sunday morning. Well, well listen, we're three we're free sleeps away. We're three sleeps away. He's definitely going to sleep Saturday night, you know, when, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I smash him in. So listen, we're days away. We're days away. And, and nobody's going to be interested. He can say what he's saying today. I, and Kel, I want to answer. He can say what he's saying today. No, but fine. listen, after Saturday, no one's going to be interested. That's you can, just, you can cool. go to Dubai that's and just carry on doing what you're doing. That's your prediction. That's the end of but it. But you don't want to ask one question. Obviously, we've got, we got everyone here. You know, I saw a video where you said that you're going to smash that Papa Dom chin in. Did you, you said that, didn't you? I mean, that's quite, it's quite racial, that is. I mean, so you saying what, what, that. What are, you, are you trying to get? Well, I mean, it's quite sad to say that because at the end of the day, look, you've got, it's very sad saying that because at the end of the day, you know. What are you trying to say? I'm racist. Guys, let's talk the fight. Yeah, the way you said that, I'm really sad. Cal, come on. Come on. Let's should have said that. Let's talk the fight. Adam, can I just ask why he said that? Let's talk the fight. Why did he say it? Cal. You know, everyone, everyone knows they're very fragile like your chin. Yeah. Cal, you've been away, Fuerteventura. You put everything into this camp. Is it the best, Dominic was saying to me the other day, probably the best camp since Sean Porter. Is it the best you felt, the weight we know, the 149, a slight issue here. How are you feeling in yourself compared to all the other great nights you've had? Well, he, he made a mistake, you know, seven months we've been talking about, you know, about this fight, you know, Amir's team, my team. You know, I've been training because I knew that it was going to come off, you know, he got agreed and then he come back to the table and wanted to change the contract again. You know, I've seen in the gloves are off that it says that I'm half broken. It seems to me that in his mind that he's only took this fight because he thinks I'm half broken, but he's made a massive mistake. He's made a massive mistake in this fight, a massive mistake, because you're going to see that you're going to see, you know, like we've been away in Fort Ventura for six weeks. We've, we've been living, we've been doing absolutely everything possible to, to be in the best possible shape for, the, for Saturday night. And, every, and the world's going to see you know, me go in there and destroy him. And you'll destroy him, and you believe you'll destroy Kel, Amir? 100%. I mean, look, we, the hard work has been done, and we've done what we needed to do. We've trained very hard for this fight, and I'm sure he has as well. And, you know, come fight night, the best, uh, the best man will win. Let's bring the two dads in right now. Uh, let's go down to Terry. Oh, my uh, dad didn't come because I used to... Oh, yeah, I didn't your blood. He made it. He made it. He made it. He sneaked up. He's, 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 he's been in this business a long time. I saw him coming, don't worry. Um, Terry, let's start with you. Obviously, an incredibly close connection with Kel for many, many years. You, you believed in him. You've always said to, to all of us that the best Kel Brook, the right Kel Brook, is, is almost unbeatable. He's in the shape of his life. How confident are you and the family that this will be the defining night for Kel Brook? I'm, I'm, actually, very, very, I'm actually very confident in this fight. You know, uh, you know what it is with Kel, he, he needs a fight that he can really get his teeth into. You know, in the past, it's, you know, Kel's career, it's gone up, it's gone down. He's, 
you know, all the main fight, fighters have avoided him. You know, he's never really got got the chance of fighting the big names because they all know he's dangerous. And me and you were dangerous from, from a very young age. And obviously that's why we believe, obviously, he's sidestepped us and that sort of thing all the way along the line. You know, and uh, it's got to a stage where... We have done, I've lost it. <laughs> it's got to a stage, obviously, where between them, like Kel says, you know, back to amateur days, Kel were winning gold medal in, in Four Nations, and me and one on and won silver medal. You know, we were with first promoter. You know, I believe we, we got sidelined. What we got promised is what we never got, you know, and obviously the, the big fighters, we got promised them from Manny Pacquiao, on and on and on, and they never materialised, you know, so Kel in between, unless you put something in front of Kel, you know, then that, that he can get his teeth in for, then he's... Is half hearted because you've seen him, he's, fell in, he's been in love with boxing, then he hasn't been in love with boxing, you know, and it's all, all due to not getting in there and get, getting the, the names in. But this is one fight that, you know, has always haunted us for years and years and years. You know, like you say, all, all the, every week I was, when you're fighting Amir, when you're fighting Amir. Well, all I know is that it's here. The, the fight's here today and it's literally two days away. I can't even believe myself that it's happening. I've still got to see them get through ropes. That's how much I've believed that it's happening, you know. And the only thing I can do, I can obviously thank, thank Sky for being behind it. Thank, you know, Ben Shellon, you know, a boxer for, for putting it together, you know. Thank, thank everybody, you know, involved with it, you know, and, and it's happening. Thanks, Terry. It's haunted the Brook family. Shah, has it haunted your family? Um, not really, to be honest with you. Um, but like Terry just saying there, I mean, uh, Kel Wally needed something uh, there to fight for. I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? Because, in other words, all the big fights he's had, they meant nothing to him. So, I mean, he reckoned this is the weakest fight for him. Yeah, of course it is the biggest fight for him. Amir's ready, I'm sure Kelly's ready as well, you know. But come fight night, all the preparations will be behind. All the, all the work's been done in the gyms, you know. And it's pointless talking about anything now. Um, all the hard works are done. Amir's ready for him, no matter what Kel brings. Amir reminds me of him when he first turned pro. This is how much committed he was for this fight, you know. Because all the, uh, there was no uh, distractions, the camp was brilliant. I think Bomak did a great job with him, uh, keeping everybody away from the training camp. Just Amir and his trainers. Nobody else was in there. Even I wasn't there. You know, so I think that was a great thing, you know. So he concentrated, he's ready, and he's willing, you know. Uh, come fight night, you will see fireworks, definitely fireworks. And you'll see who will be burning. You know him better than anyone, pretty much, Shah. And, and what, what do you feel uh, as a family? You say that he's gone away, he's in the best shape of his life, almost like when he was turning pro. So it's got to mean something very deep for you guys. A hundred percent. I mean, every fight's a big thing for us, you know what I mean? But this particular fight, the preparation was incredible for him, you know. Uh, and to, what it means, means to us, it means everything to us. Every fight means everything to us, you know. Um, because we're behind him 100%, whatever he does, whoever he fights, you know, we're always there for him. And he always wanted this fight. It was unfortunate, you know, it was, both guys wanted the fight. It was behind the scenes what was negotiations, what made this fight, you know, delayed to where it is today. But it's happening. It's happened. It's going to happen now. Come Saturday night, we'll see everything. Let's get straight to Bo Mack alongside you, Brian McIntyre. Uh, great words from Shah. Everybody saying that, that you and Amir have got this fantastic relationship now. Terence Crawford, of course, uh, alongside him. Has the camp been as incredible as Amir is saying? And, and what about this new relationship you've got with him? Because obviously <coughs> at the other end of the table, there's a, there's a, there's a huge history. But this is a new one. Well, I will tell you this, Cap was, it was fun, most, most important thing. Uh, he pushed it, he grinded it out. And uh, he didn't complain not one time. Um, we went through four or five, maybe six sparring partners. Um, I tried to push him and push him and push him to him. So I could hear him say I quit and he never said it. He just kept, kept going, kept going. And um, me and the team was proud of him. And as far as the relationship goes, it's like a father-son relationship in there. I'm not taking no shit. I don't want to hear no shit. Just get the fucking work done. Yeah. What's, your, what's your language, Bo Mack? But thank you. We, we got that point. We got that point. Excuse for the language, but that's fantastic. Bo Mack, um, what I want to know is, is, as well, obviously you've trained Terence Crawford and he's, he's the pound for pound king. It's fantastic to have him here uh, this week. But of course, your man beat Amir. 
uh, thinking back to when Lennox Lewis got knocked out by Oliver McCall and he took Manny Stewart to sort of rebuild him. Why did you take on Amir Khan? Did you, did you see something even in the fight against Terence that made you think, you know, I want to work with this guy? Well, one thing I was convinced of that uh, he wanted more than Kel did, because Kel only went three rounds. So, Amir, he came in there trying to fight. So what I did was, when I sat down with the team and we decided we was going to take Amir on, all we needed to do was sharpen the, sharpen the iron, sharpen the tools, because he was a threat. And he's going to be a, definitely a threat come Saturday night. What sort of performance are you predicting from Amir, and how does it end? I'm going to tell you like I tell everybody else. We train for 12 rounds, but if the stoppage is there, we're going to go for it. Down to Dominic Ingle, who has known Cal forever. Uh, you're back together. Um, you've said to me about the, the, the Sean Porter camp and how pleased you are with Cal, that he's done absolutely everything this time around. But we all know it's not just the physical preparation, it's the mental one as well. He's wanted this fight, I'm sure you have for a long, long time. Yeah, it's the fight, you know, we've been waiting for. To be honest, I'm surprised that Amir's actually took the fight and his team have took the fight because in the position where he's in, he's a bit of a celebrity, he's a bit of a superstar. It's not probably a fight he needed to do because it's not really going to benefit him apart from the money. If he wins this fight, he's got more to lose than he has to gain. And I'll, I'll tell you now, if I were in his position as his father, I'd say, why do you need to take this fight? We can't actually believe that Khan's turning up for this fight, that he agreed to this fight. Because, you know, we needed the fight, Kel needed the fight, Khan didn't need the fight. So he's got everything to lose and really nothing to gain because people expect him to beat Kel Brook anyway. The only thing what's kind of, you know, thrown a fly in the ointment is that the book is a wee Kel. And that's going to, like, affect all the people. All his friends, Kel, said, you know, get a bet on me. The odds aren't very good to bet on Kel to win because he's a favourite. So, you know, I wouldn't have took the fight if I was Khan. It's not really something he needed to do. And to be honest as well, I expected a bit more from Brian, a bit more verbal because he's a good talker. I thought his press conference would be a bit more lively, you know, because he likes to shout off a little bit. He knows everything about Kel Brook. So it will be interesting if he actually does know about Kilbrook. I think all he knows about Kilbrook is what he's seeing against Crawford. And, you know, you know it wasn't much different. It wasn't much different to, to what Khan did. But the thing is, Khan took away out. He said he got hit in the balls and that was it. Done. He didn't want to get the final knockout. So, you know, we're going to see on Saturday night, the talking's going to be over. It's going to come down to the physicalities of it all. You know, Khan is a very good talker. I love listening to him. I love it. I love it. But on the night, there's not going to be any talking. It's just going to be down to who wins, who punches the hardest, who's got something left. And I believe, I believe, Kel's got more in the tank and more left than Amir Khan. That's what this fight is down to, who's got more in the tank. And it's down to me as a trainer, you know, to believe that Kel's got what he's got left. It doesn't matter to Bone Mike whether Khan wins or not, because he's still got Terrence, he's still got that paycheck coming in every fight. Khan's just a bit of filling in time, that's all it is. He's a brave man taking on Amir Khan, that's all I'll say. Dom. Yes, Amir. I mean, I mean we want to ask Yes, Amir, how are you? I'm not, how are you Good. Doing? What did the sweat taste like? <laughs> it you know what? Do you know what? It tasted fantastic. It did. Conditioner. And listen, I, I heard that tonight yeah. you're going to drink his piss. <laughs> you know, listen, what's going on there, brother? Yeah, come on. Amir, you, you know, know what? Come on. You know what? It, as a boxer. I love it, bro. As a boxer. That's dirty. As a boxer. That's dirty. As a boxer. That's listen, dirty. as a boxer. Listen, as a boxer. That's dirty, though. Come on, you don't do that, man. You've got to admire what Yeah, but you don't drink someone's listen, sweat. I wouldn't. I, don't, I'm I, not, I would I, never drink my own sweat. Listen, there's lots of things we shouldn't do, as you know. Yeah, but right. still, come on, you don't I'm know. actually surprised that we haven't got a big thing on here. We're sponsored by Kleenex. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I haven't got that. Anyway. Yeah. Like yeah. I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. Sometimes I got a question. we regret the things we do. I got a question. Don't we? Go on, I got a question. Go on, Brian. You said. Go for it, Brian. You said. You said we are, you know. Why I take the fight? Uh, it's all about the paycheck. Let me ask you a question. Mm. You know how much Kel got left in the tank, don't you? That's why you didn't come over and fight us in America. Because um, you knew, you knew, you knew, you knew he wasn't gonna do anything in that fight. Do you know what? So you, let me let me say something to you. Yeah. There's the the, the tr train of thought, the train of training, whatever the case gotta be. Sorry, it ain't gonna fucking again. change. Sorry, what, what? It's not gonna change. Sorry. You know how much that. he got left in that tank, don't you? Oh, I know. Yeah, exactly it's for the paycheck for you. Yeah. No, you know it is. Because he, he has nothing. I've you had, know that. 
I've had a lot. I've had a lot. No, of he. Tank. No, Kelly. Kelly don't have nothing left in that tank. You reckon? You, reckon? you know that. You know. Y'all just going yeah. through the motions. Yeah. Y'all going through the motions. You think? He hasn't fought since Crawford. Oh, okay. What is he doing now? What he been doing? Walking streets and do partying, being who? in limelight Brian, and all that. Brian, he ain't Brian. gonna do shit. Who did he? Ain't gonna do who shit. did it me? I who you did it me if I, I after, promise after, you that. Now you gonna woke me up. After, after you woke me up now because now, you're now, now he's, he's come alive. Look, go on, press coffee. He's come alive. Come on, Brian. Keep going, please. Come on, keep going. But not too much. He Not too much. Do shit. I want to see what? you getting in that ring on what? Saturday night. What? Not killing over, nothing. yeah? What? Keep shouting. He ain't going to do nothing. Go on. You done? He ain't going to do you done? shit. What? Have you done right? Okay, then. The reason I didn't train him for Crawford is it wasn't enough time to get him into oh, the Oh, now you want to explain. That's you should explain that shit when he, got, when he went over there. Keep shouting. Keep shouting. Is that it? You done? Yeah? I'm done okay. when I say I'm okay. done. Good, good. You done? I'm done when I'm saying I'm done. Have you finished? Can I talk now, yeah? Yeah? Okay. We both Now, know. every time we... you talk, I don't want to hear that shit. Shut up. Hey! Shut up. Shut up. Wait, what? Can I talk now? You finished? You pissed me off. Oh. He don't do shit. He shot. Listen. He shot. Listen. He, Brian, good for three. Brian, he good for four rounds. Now, let me keep it real. Brian, he good for four rounds. It's going to be a tight ass fight for the first couple of rounds. But after that, he going to start dwindling away. Watch. Somebody check his blood pressure. He know that. You know that. Your whole camp know that. You know that. <laughs> right. It's you the one come for the base. So we've got Brian, who's training him here. Former boxer, very good. He had a good knockout ratio, 63%. Unfortunately, it was him getting knocked out, and that's probably why it's going to work with him and Carl because he can probably talk corner way through them knockdowns that he had so what, psychologically. What, what, what that got to do with them two exactly. fights? Got nothing what to that do got to do with them two fights? Now down, you want to try to attack down, me? Calm down. You want to attack me? Calm down. I couldn't attack you. All right, them taxes ain't going to work, partner. I couldn't attack you. It ain't going to work. I attack you. Them two got to fight, not me and you. Exactly. He got to fight so me. So why are you doing the talking? Kill ain't got to fight why you. Why are you doing the talking? It's not you that fighting. That shit ain't going to work. Calm down. It's not going to work, man. You're not going to make that ring on Saturday night. You're not. You're not. We're gonna need two sets of paramedics. Okay. Okay, Dom, Brian. Yeah, one for you? No, not for me. I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Let's get I'm back good. to the fighters. Amir, you are the underdog in this fight. How do you feel about that? I mean, time will tell come Saturday. Um, yeah, I mean, quite surprised by it, but um, yeah, I mean, look, um, we've done all the hard work and. Um, there's no point talking about it now and just putting the work to it. I mean, if you guys want to make money, guys, good time to make money then. You know, put, put your bets on me. Because, um, yeah, quite surprised about it, but yeah, it's what it is. Yeah, it's cool. You've heard the two trainers speak. Yeah. Time for you to talk to Cal, maybe one final time. What are you going to say to him? We've seen the gloves are off. We've seen you on the ringside set together so many times over the years. What do you want to say to Cal now, just before the weigh-in and the fight night? I hope he's ready. You know, um, and we're going to give the fans in Manchester an amazing fight. I mean, it's been, it's been long overdue, this fight has. And um, we all to tune in and check this fight on Sky. It's going to be a massive one. And like I said, you, you know we don't like each other, and it's going to be fireworks come fight night. Thank you. Kel? I didn't think the day would come, like, like Dom said, but we're days away. I'm just, I'm just so happy our training's gone. I'm just excited. It's going to be it's an adventure, all this, you know, seeing, seeing everyone come out, seeing all the fans. The fans are going to get to see this fight, what, what I've wanted to, to give them for years. So I'm, ex I'm just excited. I'm excited to put on a show Saturday night. Do you want to look at him? Do you want to okay. give a final prediction, tell him what's going to happen? He's going to get beat. He's going to get beat. You're going to get knocked out. Uh, well, we, we'll see. We'll see, won't we? We're going to get a knockout either way. We're going to get a knockout and he's going on He's going on his face or his back, one, one, one or two. I'm here, by knockout, definitely. Definitely, I'm going to hurt him. And uh, I'm going to hurt him and then he's going to, he's going to be putting in, put in his place. Yeah, definitely. Going to, going to shut him up for good. Somebody he's going to remember for a very, very long time. We're all going to remember it for a very, very long time. Saturday night can't come quickly enough. The fighters will face off. But before that, just want to get a couple of questions from down there. I think Craig Slater from Sky's got one. Craig, are you around? Yeah, um, Victor Lachlan is the referee for the fights. Will the fight itself be easier to referee the press conference? Is that fair? Is, despite all the ugliness between you, you have to, a good clash of styles? 
We'll have to wait and see. I think it's it's going to be a war for, on my side. I'm coming. To, I'm coming for battle. The feeling from Kel's camp, from what I can see, is that they believe he was always the better fighter, and that's why Amir's avoided him his whole career. And I think they feel like he's got nothing left. And I think in Kel's team, it's they think that he's made a, a really big mistake here. He's had a long time to train. He, the weight has been no problem. And uh, yeah, we're going to see on, on Saturday night. But I know from the Brook side, they've been waiting for this moment for a long, long time. And in their eyes, this is a, it's a ticking bomb and it's ready to go off. Ben Ransom with a question, I think, somewhere. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Um, to both fighters, if I can, there's been a lot of talk about the gentleman. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the billing for this fight. Calm Brook, we're finally going to get to see it. To both men, is it a double A side or is it an A side and a B side? Amir first, maybe? I think Kel knows who the A side is. <laughs> you know, he, he admitted that the, behind the ropes or what it's called. Um, gloves that, are off. Gloves are off, yeah. So I think he knows who the A side is. Um, but come find out, look. Forget the A side or B side. I mean, then it's, we're just going to be in there and the best man will, who wins will be the A side at the end of it. Yeah, the A side is irrelevant now. We're going we're gonna to see Saturday night who the better fighter is. The, the, world, the world watching boxing is going to see me and Khan square off. So, tune in. Jeff, you got a question. Jeff Powell from the Mail. Afternoon, gentlemen. Um, the grudge we all know about We've listened to the insults, but here are two fine professional boxers. Can you express any respect for each other? Well, you know, I did stick my hand out to shake his hand um, after the, the show. Uh, was it off? <laughs> and uh, what happened was... Too many punches. Yeah. And then obviously when I stuck my hand out, he don't want to shake hands. Um, but come fight night, I don't think he'll be able to shake my hand. I think the, the beating he's going to get would be impossible. He will not shake my hand because the beating I'll give him, I don't think he'll have the, he'll have the energy to do that. Listen, I've, you know, I've always acknowledged his achievements in boxing. The respect of anyone who gets in, gets in good overseas, win a world title, or always become the world champion, the respect's there. But, you know, he's never given me that same respect. And, and I'm not going to give you an handshake when I'm training to punch you in the face. I don't want to get friendly with you and shake your hand. I'll say I'll shake your hand after the fight. If, we have a, if, you, if you stand and give the fans a good fight, I will give you. But if you, start, if you just go out and get chinned, then I don't think I'll probably shake your hand then. Gareth A. Davis. A uh, question for both uh, Amir and Kel, different questions. Um, Amir, it, it began as business for you, and now you say it's personal. Does that change your mentality coming into this fight? Has it helped you in any way? And to Kel, obviously there's a lot of talk about your weight always and coming in at 149 pounds. Um, is it an issue for you tomorrow, and do you care about coming over the weight? And if you, if you do, you'll just pay the fine to Amir first? I mean, look, whenever we, whenever we fight, I mean, we come trained, we come ready. I mean, look, this has been talked about for a very long time, this fight. I'm not going into this fight in a way to, because I hate him or, I'm just gonna go in there to give him a boxing lesson to show him that I'm the, I've always been the better fighter. You know, there's always been talks of, uh, you know, I walk down the streets, people say, oh, you should take the Kel Brook fight. Even this was probably, the talk started probably even before he was a world champion, because it was, would have made a good domestic fight. But I think now it's come to a stage where we've both been world champion, we've both achieved the highest level of this, in, in the sport of boxing. Why not make this fight happen? We're similar ages, so that's when we decided to, and I decided to go and make it happen. And I'm the one who sent my team to Kel's team to say, listen, can we make this fight happen and let's make it happen. So that's why it was. Dave, Wally, either of you got... The weight, the way, you know, I just, I just believe that you know, with the gloves are off, that he's saying that I'm half broken. So in my mind, I think that he's, he's waited till this time thinking that I'm half broken in his mind. 
he knows that I struggle to make them world weight uh, limits, so I think that he's obviously wanted to come down as much as he can. Even though that we're both we're both 35 year old, we're not we're not 18 or 19 year old anymore. He's boxed Canelo and I away. I boxed Klovkin and I away. We're both older. It should have been more more of a natural weight, but he's obviously wanting everything he can, you know, to put me in a position where I'm at a disadvantage. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make them demands. I might I might even come in overweight Saturday, tomorrow. I might even come overweight. We'll wait and see. But the bottom line is we're going to be face off and we're going to see who the top dog is. Okay. Uh, a question for both, really. The, the fact that this is such a big grudge match, does that help in terms of giving you energy or is there a danger of perhaps losing focus and deviating from the game plan? No, not really. I mean, I think we're old enough now. At 35, you know, you, you're old enough to stick to the game plan and be smart in there. See, when I was a little bit younger, maybe that would have affected me. But as I've got older now, I'm a little bit more wiser. Um, it's more smarter and you're going to stick to the game plan a little bit more. Um, but yeah, you know, but there comes times in fights where you might see red and you might say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the kill. Um, so yeah, I mean, but to be honest with you, I'm, a little, I'm wiser now at this age and experienced enough to not to make mistakes and not to go off the game plan. And I think that I think he's just learned learned to be slept. You know, it's, I've never been knocked out in my career. I've never been knocked spark out. He has, so I think that that's what he's learned in his, in his time. Thank you, guys. One more question I've got for both of you. Obviously, the, the pair of you have been fantastic fighters the last couple of decades for us, and been in some of the most exciting fights. How exciting a matchup do you think we're going to get on Saturday for the fans? We're definitely going to get fireworks. Um, I'm not going to stand. I'm, I'm not going to be standing back. I'm going to be giving it my all. Uh, all the training I've done, and I've been away from my family, my, my 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 kids, my wife, and everyone is because obviously I want to stay focused on, uh, and I want to train. I mean, I mean, so I'm ready for this fight. You know, I've given it my all. Them sacrifices, you know, um, and hard sparring sessions we've had. Days in the, I used to wake up some mornings and couldn't even get out of bed. I used to be that broken and that tired. Well, I kept pushing because I really need to win this fight. This is a fight I'm going to definitely win. And I know I put my work and hard work into it, so I'm going to make sure that I come through it with flying colours. Styles make fights. That's the curiosity. Style. How dramatic will it be? Styles do make fights. This is a, a, a wicked fight. You know, Styles has got speed. I've got the power, the accuracy, the movement. We both want this fight more than ever. You know, so, you know, the fans are in for a, an, an unbelievable treat Saturday night. You know, I've I've been away from my family over over, over Christmas, over New Year. Uh, you know, so I've put the work in also. You know, and I've 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 put myself through it because it means so much for me. It's I've you know this fight's been talked about for many many years, and now we're days away, and uh, I'm not, you're gonna see the condition, and you're gonna see that the hard work I've put in. I'm ready for a 12 hard round. You know, so whatever he brings, I'll, I'll have an answer for, and I'm, I'm ready to just put a show, show on for the fans now. You ready? Okay. <laughs> I am ready. I think, um, look, the emotion's so high, we're in for something special in Manchester. It's a story that has literally gripped the nation, and I think it's going to come down to who keeps the head. The emotion's going to be so charged on Saturday night. They both come with huge followings from Sheffield and from Bolton, and I think, yeah, it's going to come down to who can keep their head. Who can, who, who can keep to their game plan? And it, apart from that, I can't see anything in it. Great. Wednesday tomorrow, fight night, we cannot wait for on Saturday. So there'll be a face-to-face -face with a pair of them down there. Thank you very much. Good luck to both of you, and thank you for making this fight.